So we have a 27-year-old Hispanic woman presented to the University Medical Center Emergency Department in Las Vegas, Nevada, with the sudden onset of shortness of breath and increased difficulty in moving her right arm. She reported that during the evening prior to her presentation, she was lying down when she began to experience shortness of breath with worsening right arm weakness. She also reported for the past two months that her arm weakness was characterized as having limited strength and range of motion. She also complained of chest pains that were localized behind her sternum. The pain was characterized as a pressure sensation that was non-radiating. She did not have any aggravating or relieving factors. Pertinent positive findings included nausea, palpitations, and lightheadedness. Pertinent negative symptoms included no loss of consciousness, headache, vomiting, diarrhea, or vertigo. Our patient had been evaluated in the same emergency department two months prior to this presentation for right arm weakness and dysphagia. During her prior admission to the emergency department, she received multiple MRI studies of her brain and cervical spine. A previous MRI of her brain had been unremarkable, but an MRI of her cervical spine had indicated some mild uh, cervical canal narrowing, secondary to unplanned changes, and chronic kyphotic changes. At the time of her previous admission, she was diagnosed with hemiplegic head migraine headache. Her physical examination was remarkable and that her abdomen was firm to palpation, and her right upper extremity was rigid on passive and active ranges of motion. Her right fingers were clenched in a fist. When her fingers were passively extended, the digits spontaneously recoiled to the flex and fist position. Neurologically, she exhibited some dysarthria, but her cranial nerves were intact. Meanwhile, EMG testing was performed in her right upper extremity muscles, including the dorsal interosseous pronator teres, pectoral radialis, biceps, triceps, deltoid, and opponens pallises. In the muscles tested, frequent involuntary runs of motor neurons, continuous motor unit activity, were identified. Through limb repositioning, her resting activity was studied, revealing absent fibrillations or positive waves. EMG testing of all the muscles involved resulted in normal motor unit morphology and normal recruitment. There was no evidence of myochemic or myo neuromyotonic discharges. Her EMG findings were consistent with SPS in the right clinical setting. Our prognosis of cis person syndrome.